to Poptternative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. PD Beats here from Poptternative, speaking to John Cameron Mitchell about the Sandman dropping on Netflix August 5th. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Very happy to be here. Isn't this exciting? I feel like people found out about the announcement of a Sandman show like a while ago. And that was finally yeah. coming out. <laughs> I know. It's been like 30 years or something where it <laughs> stops and starts. And it's because it's expensive. You know, only a few venues could really do it. And the streaming era was obviously the natural, you know, place for it. People it felt a little too alternative for mainstream uh, television and for ma certainly for uh, features, you know, look at the Watchmen, you know, it was like the first, the first movie was kind of dumbed down. And then the second, the series really took the spirit of the Watchmen and told a new story in a beautiful way. Yeah. So I really, I think Alan Heimberg, the showrunner and Neil Gaiman, the executive producer have found the right tone and the right star, Tom Sturridge, a, a role which could be very flat if you read it. Yep. He imbues it with this, you know, depth of memory that it's like a, a young man playing a very old man. He's got so much behind, which could be cartoonish. Yep. Um, but I, I really think he's great. I, I love the fact that this the characters emotional lives are given their due the way they're not yeah in a similar kind of show mm -hmm. uh but that's neil's thing you know he loves his myth and he loves to play with the metaphors of myth but he cares deeply about his characters but also kind of add to that and i and i feel like for people that like were big fans of the dc comics i mean it's not really a surprise but one of the things that i think is a really cool thing about this show is the genre bending component of it there's so many kind of things that are kind of thrown in and sometimes as yeah. the audience member you don't know what's going on because it's like is this fantasy yeah. is it sci-fi is it supernatural it's scary at times horror and everything do you notice that you're working on a genre bending show at all while you're like working on it or does it only like sink in like afterwards after you wrap that it's like wow like it's a genre yeah, as show yeah i didn't read all the scripts because it was so much going on and <laughs> how it's just a little part of it um but i all of my work is always it, it, i don't think of the the term genre is generally used there's certain rules to certain genres and you can subvert or not mm -hmm. but it's mostly to sell you know the the Genre is a capitalist thing term, yep. you know, even a 10 year old is like, well, what do you make? You know, when I'm a director and they're like comedies, <laughs> dramas, indies, as if it's a different thing, you know, is it, a, what is it? Is it a, a rom-com? I'm like, look guys, it, why must you need, why do you have to categorize? Exactly. You know, what is this need? What is this OCD need to give it a label? <laughs> Whereas in our lives, we're laughing in one second and crying the next, and then we almost get hit by a car in the third. Our life is multi-genre. Yeah, but John, let, so don't, John, but don't like, freak out about it. But John, like, let's be honest, right? Like, genre bending is like a fad now. It's like a trend. It's like, you know when hot sauce was like the biggest thing and everything? It's like, <laughs> I feel like... People... I don't think it's a fad. I think it's closer to what life really is. Maybe not a fad, but so, it's like it's big right now. Like, people are trying to make the next big genre bending project whereas in 2005 some of my favorite films i don't think the writers woke no they up didn't and do that like, yeah. yeah i want to make a genre bending movie <laughs> yeah but the thing is i you know for example all of my films hedvig short Buzz, how to talk to girls which was a neil gaiman adaptation you know no one would know if there was a video store anymore no one would know what department to put it in mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. You know, Hedwig was like, is it a musical? Is it a comedy? Is it this, that? It's everything, yeah. you know? And that's, I, you can do that badly. But I think um, Alan and Neil have found a way to keep the forward momentum of what the characters need to do. They got to find those three objects. They've got a, certain things to do. Um, and they have uh, adversaries, you know, the Corinthian and this and that. And then they've got characters who are, characters who are caught up in that, 
uh, story. I think he, they managed to find a way where those characters aren't just pawns. Yep. Sometimes in other fantasy things, I even American Gods, like I don't really care. I can enjoy the fun of it, but like the main character was a bit of a blank. Yeah. You know, in that. Even Game of Thrones, you, I, there are certain episodes I was swirled away, but other times I'm like, I don't feel like they care about the characters. They just want to have another red wedding. And to me, um, that's what dif differs George Martin from Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Neil really cares about the people. George loves the giant sweep of things and myth as well. But I'm more of a Neil Gaiman person. And I love, I also love Watchmen. I love The Invisibles. With Sandman, those three graphic series uh, changed comics forever. Yeah. And... The only one left to do now is Invisibles. Absolutely. Did you yeah. ever read the Invisibles? I, I have I have, but I I still think the the Sandman out of a lot of his work, I don't know. Do you think people like that's it's my favorite most, one? It's my favorite. It's the most influential yeah, for sure. It's my favorite. No, but some people would probably disagree because a lot of people think that there's, you know, like you mentioned, all the others as well. But that and and the thing is, here's of, the, of the comics, you mean. of the comics specifically, yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah, books yeah. are a whole other thing. I'm talking about the comics. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, so what interests me as well is, you know, I, you know, I'm born 1991, so I'm a '90s kid. I grew up with, you know, DC, Marvel, and everything. I used to have all the shirts, the merch, and everything, but I was always teased. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this guy! You know, geek mm -hmm. culture, comic book culture, and everything. It has yeah. been completely it took over didn't it, it? <laughs> it took over and now i'd be the most popular kid at school people would want to ask right, me right, about right. the merch so i'm just curious right. you know dc comics you know the sandman you're working on this project at like when it, this is the cream of the crop of like content these days the, these worlds yeah, yes. of like geek culture so i'm just curious what's that like from a storyteller working perspective, working on a project where it's 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 at its prime right now. This is like the big, these are the biggest yeah. projects by a landslide. It's well, weird, like isn't you, it? Like you, I was, yeah, like you, I was the nerd that loved these fantastical worlds and yep. speculative fiction and, and sci-fi and fantasy and comics got me through all of my adolescence. And I would sneak comics in and my parents had to ban me from comics. And that was wonderful. And you add your own life to them. You know, when they are taken over by multinational co corporations and becoming <laughs> gigantic tentpole movies, they are by necessity, they tend to be formulized, mm -hmm. right? Like you can, apart from maybe Taika Waititi's Marvel movies, they're all pretty much in a, in a template, right? Yeah. There's some you kind of know what's going to happen right and then there's a few quips and there's an action sequence and then maybe there's some love and then but they're not really interested in the love and yep. they get to the next action thing you can almost time the action sequences out and in the comics it was a bit more of a free-for-all and yep. you you know it was it was fun to see stories carried out over different titles and you know they're starting to do that with the comic uh, with the movies now too but then you had the revolution of Gaiman, Moore, and Morrison, and they brought an adult point of view, but still the thrill of the kid stuff, let's yeah. say, you know, the action, the fun, the, um, and I love that. I love that mashup. Yeah. So now, since uh, Watchmen was adapted in a very different way from the comics, but really captured the spirit of it and did it really well on television and i believe sandman is doing that now too i hope to see invisibles maybe i'll even get to be part of it i was always obsessed with the you know lord fanny who was the the uh the trans character from brazil um in apocalyptic one of the great titles uh there was there maybe there's now an opportunity to deformulize this stuff again the way we experienced it as kids anything goes when you were a kid right sometimes i wish there was a bit more of you know the the queer subtext coming out but now it is out yes sandman's pretty damn queer yep you know they've made naturally so mm -hmm. you know neil gaiman and and kate bush came up at the same time and 
punk rock and new romantic was very queer. And to me, it feels natural, yep. a natural progression. Watchmen did its own progression, but it didn't, it didn't fuck it up. You know, it actually, you know, extended it. Absolutely. And yeah. And in some ways, Invisibles was even more ahead of the curve in terms of things like queerness. Um, so I welcome all of these shows. I love, let's break up, you know, let's break up some of the, the formulaic scar tissue of Marvel and, and DC in, in the movies yeah. with these stream, streamer shows. Oh, absolutely. John, thank you so much for your time. And people are going to be able to yeah. see The Sandman dropping August 5th on Netflix. Thanks so much for your time. It was so great chatting yes. with you. Yeah, thank you. You take care, Petey. No problem. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.